at some point, just let me know, and I'll try to get back to the model. So a metaphysician, do many of you know what a metaphysician is? You ever heard of it? So let me give you a background first, and then I'll tell you what a metaphysician is. So I had a son at 18 months old who had spinal meningitis. Now, I worked as a nurse in the pediatrics, so when I brought him in, of course, we got the best care, continue to bring him back to life. He was in a coma. The third week, they said, you need to really take this serious and go home and plan for his funeral. So my supervisor is sitting there telling me, no, let stop. Just give this up and go home and get ready to bury your son. And I looked right at her and I said, well, if my son dies, I want to be with my home. So as I'm, as she, I asked her to leave, I wanted privacy. <laughs> so my son is on his bed and I'm standing at the foot. Something comes over me and I begin to do this prayer. And as I'm praying, I'm realizing something that's happening within me. And I'm beginning to shift. And all of a sudden, there wasn't any tears. And I wasn't praying for his life, but rather gratitude for the life that I got to share with him. And that I felt so blessed to have this little bundle of joy for however many months it was. And all of a sudden, this peace came over me, and I said, God, I know that you are not punishing me. I know that I am a good mother. And I'm a fantastic mother. But you're going to have to give me strength. As his life moved on, my life was being left behind. And I need you to help me. All of a sudden, there was a light that filled the room, filled my mind, filled my consciousness. There was peace that filled my body to where I couldn't understand why I was smiling during this time. And all of a sudden, this voice in my head said, now you need to go to sleep. And I could barely make it to the chair that I had slept in for three weeks. And as I made it to the chair, I literally passed out. I couldn't do anything else. And within 15 minutes, I woke up. And my son sitting straight up in bed, looking at me like, what were you doing? And he said, now listen, my son was deaf. My son could not talk. Because he had chronic ear infections. He looked at me and he said, Mama, what? And he said it like a grown adult. And I just was like, Oh my God! Oh my God! And the nurses came in and could not believe that Brian was awake, that Brian was up. And I knew in that moment, something is inside of each and every one of us that has this goal. But what did I just do? What agreement did he just make? So I, I got out of the nursing field. I got out of the nursing field completely. And I, my journey began to take me on a path of trying to figure out what the spiritual concept of what I did. Not did the medicine just decide to work at the last minute. But more of what was going on inside of me. What happened? Why did a light go off inside my head? Why was I tired after this situation took place? So I became a massage therapist after years of marketing x-ray, and I knew I was going to go out of my skull doing marketing. And while I was a massage therapist, I got introduced to metaphysics. And somebody says, oh, you'd be a great metaphysician. I was like, uh, what is that? What is a metaphysician? And why, what does it have to do with massage therapy? And I said, just trust me. <laughs> so it's like the other speaker that was just speaking. You just have to trust me. So I said, okay. And I continued to do that. And then it clicked. And I realized that metaphysics isn't about, now in metaphysics, you have to study herbs and supplements, natural healing. But I realized that through metaphysics, everything begins with our thoughts, begins in your mind. But not only in your mind, but how you feel where your heart is, and your heart and mind speaking as one. And that is where true healing always comes from, and that's where it originates. So medicine is fine when we're weak and we can't think about 
while I, I have a certain condition, that we take the medicine, we get stronger. Many of us take the medicine, we get stronger, and then we forget that there was something else that caused the issue to begin with. So as a metaphysician, I use a device called the quantum infinity. It's a quantum device. And it's a quantum biofeedback. So when we're thinking about information receiving it back and forth, on a quantum level is where all potential and all possibility live. But we can get overwhelmed with the information. And we can really get so overwhelmed with the information we don't know how to narrow it down. We don't know what block may have caused a loss of voice. We may not know in the moment what's causing multiple sclerosis. But the biofeedback device allows you on an energetic level to look at what's going on. And how is it demonstrating in your life? Right? So if I, and I'll give you mine as an example. So I had an uncle that died that I loved dearly, and we went to the funeral recently. While we were there, my sisters began to talk about memories. Memories that were not happy. And so for me, I'm listening to all these memories going on. And I realized, I can't buy into that. I can't speak that, because all it's going to do is affirm it. It's going to solidify it. It's going to create something else in my life. So as everybody's doing their thing, I'm having to suppress myself. Now, I had a choice. I could have told them what I thought. But I knew that the consequence of doing that was going to be much worse than this. Right? So when we begin to feel ill, Right? When we begin to feel sick, there's something in your energetic area that you are unconscious of. And many of us are manifesting unconsciously. Many of us don't even know what we believe on another level. And many of you won't even know because it happens inside the womb. Whether mom and dad were fighting, whether mom and dad were doing drugs, or whether mom and dad were rich, or maybe mom and dad let you off for adoption. These thoughts you're hearing inside there on a subconscious level. And we're all connected on a subconscious level. So none of the information that you're getting even today is new. None of it's new. It's just bringing an awareness to you. So when there's an awareness to you, there's a click. When there's an awareness and there's a realization, double click, now you have a shift in consciousness. And it's not until you have that shift in consciousness that you're able to take those quantum leaps and heal. Right? We can heal, we can take medicine, we can do temporary healing. But what we want is the permanent shift in our consciousness so that our son doesn't get spinal meningitis again. And let me tell you something. So, they wanted to do an IQ test on my son, because like I said, he never spoke. He could not hear, he was deaf. So they did this IQ test on my son, and these little girls are so cute. They came out and they said, Oh my God, you've got the cutest little son. He's the smartest little boy we've ever seen. His IQ is 168. Um, he's six foot two. And he has never been sick of day in his life since that moment. And my son will tell you, I can't feel pain. I cannot feel pain. And I say to him, Right? You have to remember, you have a shift in consciousness. The same moment I have shift in consciousness, you're not going to feel pain like a normal human being. Does he become invincible? No. He's got his own thoughts. He has his own problems. But in that moment when he chose life over death, just as I chose to release into life and not to death, we both have a shift in consciousness. So let me share a little bit more about how this quantum device works. And I'll tell you something. Animals do better than humans. <laughs> I, we have a bug. We have a bug. We have a bug still. So my son brought her home, brought her home to die because she had bladder issues and she was very sick. So the vet said, just take her home to die. We can't do anything for her. So about a week goes by. She can't. She barely moved around, doing her thing. Just, oh my gosh. 
Brian, is it okay if I do a biofeedback on Patty? He said, Mom, I don't see how it's going to hurt. <laughs> so I'm sitting here doing the biofeedback on this pug. Now I'm flipping along and doing my program right. And all of a sudden, she looks at me. And she, she does this number. And she jumped off the chair. And when she jumped off the chair, she turned around at me. And I swear to God, it was like she said, Thank you. Thank you so much. So she did her little number, and she was, and see, she wasn't walking. We were having to pick her up to put her on the furniture. She was having to be carried in most places. She needed to go outside and have to carry her. And she has not needed any assistance since. Now, she was only expected to live an extra week at that. And this point, it's like, he, my son said, what did you do to her? <laughs> you know, it's like she's three months old. And I was like, that's the power of the body. That's the power of the device, right? So somebody might say, but yeah, but then am I putting my power into a device? Am I not taking my own power? You and that device are not separate. It's just a tool for you to gain clarity on where you might be confused or where you may not even believe that you have a belief that could be so strong that's creating such a strong imbalance in your life, such as illness, restlessness, right? So the biofeedback device, once it locates that imbalance, we're able to bring it back into balance. It's not anything that I'm doing. I'm not fixing you. You're fixing you. Just like I didn't heal my son, a prayer did not heal my son. It was a combination of the two consciousnesses that brought life into that reality. And the same thing can happen to each and every single one of us when we're willing and able to let that go and realize that there's only you in the universe. And that every single thing that is happening to you in your life is revolved around your universe. So then people say to me, oh yeah, but you ought to meet my husband. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, I've met your husband a thousand times. <laughs> right? And so it's not about fixing your husband. It's about fixing your idea about your husband. It's about reaffirming what it is that you want to see in your husband. So there's some times where these couples will come to me and I say, now listen, you know, when I work with you, your husband's also going to change. Do you know what they'll say? I know that we worked on that. <laughs> I want you all to think about that. How many of us, each and every single day, choose not to heal ourselves because we think it's going to benefit someone else? How many of us make decisions in our lives that would benefit everybody, but we don't want that? Now, some of you might be a strange little concept, but it's true. And I see it each and every day with people who are coming in. But it's a belief. It's a belief of separation. And you're not separate from your husband. You're not separate from your dog. You're not separate from your children. You're not even separate from each other right now. But the illusion allows you to sense that so that you can have an individualized expression. So that you can individualize Yourself, like this is velvet in this light. All the glory of velvet is right here. And none of you can be me. You can try, but you're never going to be completely me. That's what gives you your individualized expression, is that there's that little gap that you sense your individualized self. But through my individualized self, I'm connected to each and every single one of you. Now, could the power of prayer work all the time without a device? Most of you have forgotten how to pray. Most of us are afraid to pray. And some of us are afraid to pray because we're afraid we're going to create something that we really don't want. So I get all kinds that come to the clinic that need that shift in reality in time and space, so that they can have the life that they want. Okay? So that they can have what they want. Is there anything wrong with you having what you want? 
So she clarified. She clarified. Some people want to think they're very bad. Not only for themselves, but other people. Exactly. Like somebody who doesn't want to heal because it's going to benefit somebody else, right? Or, or, yeah, I think a lot of other things. <laughs> right. But do bad situations create a lot of good? Can bad things Because who's learning from it? Well, of course, other people will respond to my help. Okay. Like that person who said they now she's got the ticket. Don't ever hide what you're going to do. Don't ever hide what you think you want to say. And don't be afraid of what somebody else is going to perceive it. Because it's all going to come from their mind. But you never know when something needs to happen. What, that, what, is, going, what is going to be that trigger that's going to turn somebody off to abuse? What is it going to take for us to love each other in such a way that we don't have to keep being ugly to one another and doing the bad things. And here's an example. So I was watching this video of this ICE agent who was crying his eyes out that he ripped this family apart, right? And he's crying his eyes out. I can't believe we're doing this. I don't know why we have to do this. But let me tell you something. He was guilty of doing the same crime a thousand times. But it was in that one situation where a child was disabled, that turned his consciousness. So things that seem bad to us could be because we're at a different level of consciousness. And here's the ticket. Unless someone feels guilty or remorseful and feels a sense of responsibility of what they've created, they will never shift in consciousness. You have to feel that in order for you to want something different. And once you want something different, now your consciousness is going to be exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So instead of paying attention on all the ugliness that's in the world, then we can focus on ourselves and always raising our consciousness. Because when we raise our consciousness, we raise the new consciousness of the world. And it takes each and every single one of us to be responsible for that, rather than making someone else responsible for shifting their consciousness. And that's what husbands and wives do. You need to do a lot of feedback on my husband. His consciousness needs to shift. Well, you worked on your consciousness. <laughs> because once you work on yours, it'll be fine. And it's proven it over and over again. So I don't have much time I have, but I wanted to leave enough time for questions. Because the last time I was up here, the whole crew went out there to get the questions. So, go ahead. What is the advice? So she asked what the advice is. I used quantum infinity, and on the sheets that you have, you can actually try the biofeedback device absolutely free for 15 minutes. Now, I teach this globally. I've got students in France, Spain, Italy, Africa. It's beautiful. And I'm only one person. I'm only one person, and I teach a class every single week to these new practitioners. And then I have my clients that become practitioners. But we're shifting the consciousness of this planet, we know that. We're actually going to be doing what's called a Mother's Blessing, May 11th. That's going to shift our reality back. We don't want to swing that pendulum back and forth so much that it goes to males and females and the male. We want to bring balance to it. So that's what the mother blessing is going to do. It's going to bring that pendulum back so we're going to get the feminine energy. We're going to do intuition design, creativity design. We're actually going to do, I'm doing a class where they're using their biofeedback devices to raise the female energy. And then in Father's Day, we do the same thing for the male. So what does this device do? So the device is a quantum device, meaning that it's picking up your picture, it's picking up your name, it's picking up your energy frequency. You're locked in. Once you're locked in, it would be like, uh, the best way that I can describe it is if you're getting a type of card reading and you're turning it over your cards, who's doing that? Who's giving you the information? You are. So the biofeedback device is tapping into your beliefs, your stress, your subconscious mind. 
And so all of the information that's coming through is your beliefs, your stress, and your imbalances. So the biofeedback device is reading your energy. And it's reading it on a quantum level, knowing what's better for you. Because remember, on a quantum level is where all possibility and potential live. It's where your God self is. There's only one mind. Right? So the biofeedback device on a quantum level is tapped in, it's got you, and now it's providing you with information. So you will see where the imbalances are, and we can clear them out. Bring them into balance. The imbalance is in. And whatever it is. And I use it as a metaphysical tool. So if you have the skeletal system come up, and I, I taught this just last week. Skeletal is movement, support, confidence, structure, and life. Endocrine system. Okay, so your skeletal system isn't just about your bones. It's about how you move it in life. It's about do you feel supported? So if I have a client that comes up that has their skeletal system as a high red, I can ask them, do you feel supported in life? Are you feeling confident? Right? And so that we can start opening up the realizations to what's going on. So we're looking at a physical demonstration, but we're going to the original cause. So that's what the line of Yes. Yes. <laughs> so that's a good question because you know that. So you believe. Structure or reality, right? So what she's saying is this like epigenetics, right? So their belief is is that what you believe you create your reality. It's going to manifest in your body. So no, on that count, it's not because we're going to be looking at unconscious beliefs. So a lot of them only focus on conscious beliefs, but we're going to dive deep into things that you don't know about. Yeah, so if you come by the table, you'll get a free glass scan. So what we do is we just scan the R real quick, and we'll see what energetic imbalances are within the R. Okay. 